Hi, I'm Uli John Roth, and you're watching the All Over the Place podcast where the fun sanity never ends. <laughs> Hello, welcome back to All Over the Place, the official podcast of Media Pub Live. I'm your host, Eric Provosnik. Jim Culver in the house as well. Hey, hey. Still sitting next to me because we're having some technical difficulties tonight. Marty's not here. That's that's a whole that's a technical difficulty of, of a different sort. Marty's feeling a little under the weather tonight. But with us tonight, we have got Sammy Lee, the drummer for the band Red Rain. Their latest album is called Don't Look Back. And Sammy Lee, welcome to all over the place. I appreciate you having me. Thank you so much. Pleasure meeting and, you. Well, as you can see, folks, I've got my Quiet Riot t-shirt on because Red Rain has got me in an 80s mood, <laughs> hard rock mood, and uh, it's with a, with a good modern crunch, they've had David uh, David Ivory from Hailstone produce their album, and he also produced their. It was a self titled EP, correct, Sammy? That's correct. That is absolutely. And correct. it's it's got I, it's got the, the I, I'm not, it's a rat guitar tone that you guys have, the the two guitars melding together in that one, and so you know I'm I'm sitting here spouting off with all these di different bands you've got me in the mood for. You know, Sammy, what what, what are your influences? But both you as individually as a drummer and, the, and then the band coming together. So, you know, it's funny. That's a, that's a funny question to ask because uh, I think people expect me to, to, to uh, spew out a bunch of drummers. But I, I was influenced to play the drums by one, one drummer in particular, which is Alex Van Halen. I'm a, uh, I'm a Van Halen fan, a Van Halen purist, if you will. So um, I, I just uh, the, the minute I saw a Van Halen video was the, the minute I wanted to play drums. So that's how I got started. And which Van Halen video would that be? My fellow purist. I think the first one was, uh, actually, I know which one it was. It was uh, Unchained. Ah, from, from the Oakland concert. From the Oakland nice. concert. Nice. That's right. And then when he, you know, had that monster kit, you know, the four bass drums and the black and white stripes. And then, obviously, at the end of the video, he lights the, you know, the gong on fire. I mean, it just doesn't get any better than that, you know? Yep. It just doesn't there get any better There it is. Better that's right. That. So... Um, Two Van Halen purists here, folks. We, we we know our Alex, and actually, Alex came up as uh, we we recently had a uh, uh, we have a segment called a three for, and we named our uh, top three favorite drummers, and uh, the Marty, who was unfortunately not with us tonight, Alex was on his list. I believe came in at number two. So, but I, I, mean, I do have to ask you, you: you say Van Halen purists? Does that mean the Sammy years are not to be spoken of, or just a different era? So uh, here's the thing. I, I, I believe that Van Halen was two different bands. So sure. um, it was the David Lee Roth and then it was Van Halen. And I know everybody says Van Hagar. I, it, it was Van Halen, but it was a different band. It was a, so, so the way I try to try to describe it when people ask me this is the, the original Van Halen was a dirty, grittier band. I mean, if you look at Van Halen one, obviously, which was such an iconic album. And my favorite album, outside of one, which is so funny to say my favorite album because one's always the greatest, but Women and Children First because it has it's such it, there's so much diversity on that album. You mm -hmm. got some good hard heavy rock, and then you have like a blues song, you know, in Fools. It's kind of bluesy, and then then you have the acoustic, you know, Women and Children First, and then my favorite Van Halen song of all time is in a simple rhyme, and I think that's one of Eddie's greatest greatest leads i mean the way that uh the way melodically it, it places into the song but um it's just it's just a it's it's just a dirty band i mean it's, I, I don't say dirty like grittier and then sammy was a little more pop, a little more light shown on the band a little bit lighter material so when i say purist yeah i i just think van halen with david lee roth was probably the best rock and roll band ever you're not going to get much argument for me. They're in my top five <laughs> bands of all time. I think if Quish came to shove one catalog for the rest of my life, it, it'd be Van Halen. And, uh, you know, I, I do want to end uh, with this one, keeping in the David Lee Roth frame of mind, although it has Wolfgang on the bass, different kind of truth belongs in the same sentence as those first six albums, yes or no? Um, yeah, I'd say yes, but, but... Um, over the years, I had collected so many uh, of the bootlegs and everything else that I'd already heard the songs in its original form, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. if you will. But I, I think I think a different kind of truth is an, is a great album. I mean, to come back after twenty five years, twenty seven years, and record an album, 
And as a drummer, I, I'm hoping you love As Is as much as I do. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, As Is, is I mean, again, As Is is, I mean, here's the thing about that. To me, one of the, so that's, an, that's another thing. You, you start out with Tattoo, right? And then you go to She's a Woman. And then you get in Blood and Fire. But then you go to um, As Is. And then you go to Out of Space, which is like just a really hardcore Van Halen tune. And, and that's the whole point. That's, that's what I like about Van Halen. They're all over the place. It's not just the same song, same sound every, every song. So, And I'll take Chinatown through Out of Space as that matches up against any side that they ever put yeah. out those first six albums. Great. I, great. I mean, it's a great album. Is it as great as the first six? I don't know about that, but... Um, I listen to it more than I listen to Diver Down, but that's I, that's me. And yeah. I, I just think that uh, Wolfgang, when I found out that that actually was him playing, I thought maybe, maybe it was Eddie, but I had the fortunate chance to meet Alex. And I said, just... That's Dan, was that uh, Eddie doing that? He's like, no, no, that was Wolfgang. Because he was yeah. beating that bass like, like he was uh, Billy Sheehan. But kids, I mean, that, that guy's got some great, I mean, obviously he's got great uh, genes, but I mean, he's, he's a musical talent. He really is. But, and, and I will say, on in here, on in. Mammoth WVH. <laughs> three, three times alone last year we saw Mammoth WVH. Really? He's coming yeah, from Richmond. Awesome. I think we're going to go see nice. him, yeah. Um, I highly recommend my Highly go recommend. But I will say this before we, we get off Van Halen. I know people beat up <laughs> Diver Down. They beat up Diver Down, which obviously has a lot of um, cover tunes on it. But another one of the, another, uh, another great Van Halen song is like Little Guitars my and favorite, Full Bug. Favorite of the and Full Bug. I mean, Full, full Bug, Bug good Lord. Top and, I mean, four secrets. Van Halen song ever. So that be Little Guitars is my favorite from the David, David Lee Roth era. And yeah. uh, no, Full Bug. Yeah, like, I mean, Down and Dirty. High. I mean, there's some really good stuff on that album. So The originals on that. Well, I, I've actually oh. made... Oh. Mabel, Diver Down is a good album. We're not saying it's the job <laughs> getting in on this year. We, we like the album. It's Come on, Mabel. Diver Down's good. Everybody's got an opinion. <laughs> <laughs> and, that's, and we just sent the dog outside. So, uh, well... But moving in, moving us away because this is we're Van Halen we people here on the show. And if, Mar and if Marty was here, we, we'd still be talking about it. But no, with, no. With, don't, don't look back. You guys are actually going to be going on the road fairly soon with Nazareth. How, how did that come about? Well, so uh, you know, um, we were we were doing really well before COVID hit, and uh, we were we were actually finishing up a tour with Tesla, um, and had some other shows booked. COVID hits, shuts everything down. We all know that. Um, and it, it, I think we've played two songs. I mean, no, not two songs. I think we've played four shows since COVID because getting back to where you, where we were and, and the landscape has changed now with, with tours and bands. Um, it's, it's been really difficult for us. So what we did do, and I know we'll probably dive into this more is instead of just waiting for shows, we dove into doing a full length album, which was don't look back. Um, we just kind of started over again, you know, recorded a new album, um, publicity, and then went out and tried to, you know, capture some shows. And luckily, uh, we, you know, we missed on a couple shows, which is not fun. But luckily, this Nazareth tour popped up and um, and we were able to uh, to hook on to one of the most iconic 70s bands of all time, which is Nazareth. And. So we're, we're very fortunate, we're very excited, and we can't wait to get on the road with them. Hair of the Dog, my, my, my brother Michael's uh, number one song of all time. And actually, you guys are going to be playing uh, in my old neck of the woods. You're going to be uh, you're gonna be at the Robbins Theater in Warren, Ohio. Have you That's been to correct. Warren before? I have not. I have not. As a matter of fact, I've, I haven't been to, uh, on this tour, um, I, have, I have not been to any of these cities. So I'm, I'm well, looking forward to that. Well, while you're in Warren, any Italian restaurant, it will be the best Italian you've ever had, guaranteed. Okay. All right. Well, I think we uh, – well, we play Monday night. Uh, let's see, the 12th. I think we're the 13th in Warren, Ohio, and then I think we have the next day off. So depending on whether we stay or we book that night, then if we stay, we'll, we'll try to grab something. Because we're, we're – it, it, the way this tour is kind of uh, – is, is shaping up is uh, we're doing three up north, and then we're coming back to Richmond for a night. Um, 
It's my wife's birthday, so I didn't want to miss that. So we're you gotta be home for that. Gotta be home for that. So yes. We're going to have that night off. We're going to have dinner with my daughter and my, my wife, and then we leave early Monday to get up to Ohio to play. So I don't know how much time we'll be spending in Ohio. And well, let, let me rephrase that too. Any Italian restaurant on four, uh, Route 422 will be the okay. best Italian you've ever had. Okay. All right. I'll let the guy. And people say that. I don't say nice things about Ohio much. I will say nice things about Warren, Ohio. It's it's A to Bartolo Jr.'s territory out there in the Warren Youngstown area. Okay. It's good Italian, swear to God. <laughs> now, and uh, you mentioned COVID, of course, and then uh, just the way things get, you had to hunker down. But you guys are very active with videos. We are. And, 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 and how did, were you able to use social media to just keep, to keep the Red Rain name out there? Well, that was the key, <clears throat> you know, when everybody shut down, you know, I mean, again, I mean, I speak for us, but it's everybody, everybody lost what they were building. Uh, the bigger bands stopped touring. So they were doing um, stream shows, uh, which we were actually in the works of doing a, a stream uh, concert, but then things started to uh, lessen, you know, lighten up a little bit and come back. But um you have to find ways to keep the name in the public. And that's what we kept trying to do. Um, and again, the first year that it hit, I think everybody shut down. We did, we actually didn't probably, well, you couldn't, but I think we almost had a year where we didn't even see each other or rehearse. And uh, we were kind of rehearsing uh, on our own. Um, and that's when Bubba really started to, you know, hunker down and write the album, write the lyrics for the album and write some of the music. So while it, was one of the worst things in the history of the world that happened. The one little sort of flower that, you know, sprouted in this, in this crud was the fact that we were able to slow down a little bit and, and write a full length album, which we had not been able to do for about four years because we have been, we were supporting the EP and trying to get as many shows as we, as we did, we, we were playing a lot. So, um, so if you had to find, some positive in this in this world of negative that was it so it, the world slowed down enough for us to write nice yeah, yeah. and i i mentioned at the, at the at the top of the show just i mean uh the, the different influences or at least what, what i'm hearing with it well like there's a bit of docking there's a bit of rat there, there's a there's a night ranger i think well, more, more so on the ep i think uh with, with just the melodies with the, and, and the vocals the harmonies and everything but george lynch from docket actually appeared on uh, the title track for Don't Look Back. That's true. I don't how that came about. So, um, so again, with COVID being out and then everything lightened up and we were sort of out of the game for about a year, year and a half. Uh, you, you, when you, when you try to come back as a band like us, cause we're not as well known um, and trying to keep the name out there. Um, I, 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 I thought to myself, I need, and I, and I, I use this word very loosely. I needed some sort of gimmick to kind of pull people back into this red rain, um, you know, this red rain world that we want to get them in. And so, uh, years ago, I met a really good friend who had a radio station or radio show. Uh, it's called the classic metal show. I don't know if y'all mm -hmm. heard of it. Um, but I have become really close friends with Wendell Neely and Chris Aiken and, and I've known Neely about 24 years now. And so Neely is uh, very close friends with the Doc and Camp. And so I was talking to him one day and we were just, and I just said to him, look, I got this idea. I don't like asking people for favors. I, I, I just feel like, you know, you got to work for, it, you got to fight for it. But I said to him, look, man, you and I've known each other a long time. I would never ask you this. What are your th thoughts on this? I think about getting a guest guitarist. What about George Lynch? And, and he was so gracious. He's like, I'll get it done for you. And he did. He went out and got George for us. And, um, and that's how we got him. And, um, and I, I think George knocked it out of the park on the track. So um, I, I, it turned out probably better than I ever thought it was going to turn out. So we're very excited about that. And uh, you, you guys, uh, again, uh, have you guys toured with Dokken before or – we like played shows with Dokken, not with George Lynch, but with um, the current line of the incarnation. Right, right. Mm -hmm. We played uh, one, two, we played three shows with Dokken. Nice guys. One of the few bands I did not see when I was living in L.A. So yeah, it's, I can only imagine. 
But I did, and, I did get to, I did get to meet Wild Nick Brown. He was still with them the first time we played, uh, or two of the three shows was with Wild Nick Brown. So I, I did get to sit down and talk to him for a while. That, that was, uh, that was fun. Nice. Yes. And also one of the, one of the tracks on, on "Don't Look Back." Uh, Here I am, and it's, I, I want to thank you guys for doing that song. It's a great song thank for you. people. Just I mean, it's me men mental. It's about having healthy mental health and just. If you're feeling it with depression or PTSD, and, and uh, you, can, you can read more about it on the band's website too. But it, it's just what, what inspired you guys uh, to go with that song? So, really, the album is the, the album. If you listen to some of the songs, it's really basically what I call a COVID album. Um, you know, we could go track to track, but here I am. Uh, Bubba had written about, um, you know, where the world had shut down. This is the example we use, but uh, obviously it goes further than what what we've written about. But the world is shut down. Everybody was isolated. And you kept hearing on the news, you know, depression and people, you know, when people isolate, you know, we, you know, us as people aren't used to that. You know, we're used to connections and and being around people. And so I think people's mental health dropped a lot. Now, that's a normal person. I, I mean, I can't speak for somebody who has real depression and and feels like they can't go on and feels like you know life has come to this 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 um you know that the end and so you know bubba had really dug in and it's a it's such a great song but it's about saying look look um the way you're thinking is not really a, you know not really the way there's somebody there that wants to help and is there to help and uh all you need is a friend and just reach out to somebody and again it's easier said than done. And we know that, but if we can reach one person that, you know, pick, if you watch the video, there's a hotline at the end of it and there's, mm -hmm. there's information in the beginning. So um, we hope that people will read that and realize that somebody's always there for you. Just, you just got to reach out, let them know that uh, you're going through some stuff. And uh, that's what the song's about. And it's a powerful song. It's a great song. Love. And again, thank you for doing that. Cause they're, yeah. It, it's it's necessary and it, it, it is I, necessary but you know if you again if you know we we won't go through every title but if you look at if you look at don't look back and whoever picks it up and looks at we have a song called uh buried me up to my eyes that's one of my favorites on the album based Thank on the you. title alone and the song just kicks in too well that song is about looking at life through a mask now so that's what this, you know, basically, you know, we all had to wear a mask and everybody was covered up like this. And so you're, you know, it's burying me up to my eyes and, and, and looking at life now differently, um, you know, because uh, that. And, and so that's what I'm saying. A lot of this, you know, again, written through the COVID period, um, Bubba, you know, Bubba writes all the lyrics. He's our singer um, and main lyricist. And so he just, he really, again, I said it before, he knocked it out of the park with this, with the uh, lyrics on this album. So, uh, again, we're, we're really excited about this album. I think if you're a rock fan, um, there's a lot on there that you're going to like, if not all of it. Definitely. And, and one of the things I also like about it is 10 songs coming in a little under 40 minutes, the way an album albums used to be. And, you know, just yep. li listen again. And you're, yeah, you're not right. There's not a weak track on it. There's no filler, and it's, uh, it's just something that you you're not feeling. Like I got to hit next on this one. You're you're just you just want to hit repeat at the end of it. Well, you know, I think when we came in, Jim and I were talking a little early. You know, um, so you know, I, I want to let people know off the bat, we're not a heavy metal band. I mean, you know, when you think of heavy metal, you think of Maiden. Um, Megadeth, Metallica. We're not a. We are not a heavy metal band. We are considered a, a hard melodic rock band. I stole this term from David Lee Roth back in back in the eighties. I, I consider us a power rock band. That's a little different from heavy metal because we're not really, you know, heavy, heavy, you know, tuned down all the time. So. Um, you know, uh, uh, some of the some of the bands that we've been compared to were the Dawkins, Air, like an Aerosmith type band, an ACDC type band. You know, those are the kind of bands that that are that are the wheelhouse that we're in. So I try to explain that to people because I think people, you know, sometimes like in our photo that we have, you know, we're dressed a little bit more in leather. We're not a heavy, heavy metal band. So 
I like to explain that to people because I don't want people to buy the album on false pretenses as well. File under rock, pop rock. Right, right. Power rock. Power rock. I said, Power rock. Rock. wait, what's wrong with me? What's wrong with <laughs> Clean potato off your ear, Eric. Clean potato. So it's Power Rock. Power Rock with Red Rain. And folks, you are listening to the All Over the Place podcast. We're with Sammy Lee tonight from Red Rain. You can check out the band at Red Rain. That's R E I G N band.com. And Jim, I'm going to turn this over to you for a second. Take it away. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, first of all, I was just going to echo kind of what you said, listening to the, to the album. Uh, definitely what the words that popped into my head were power metal. That's definitely yeah. the vibe I got off of that. I know, I know not all bands like to be pigeonholed a certain way. That's definitely where I'd classify you guys. Do you feel like uh, everyone's kind of on, on board with that? Or do you feel like there's kind of other influences that, that push you in some different directions? Well, I mean, you know, so, you know, we, we are, our, 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 influences come from the 80s you know again van halen here um stevie has a dockinish type you know um influence with some other bands poison you know those type of bands i'm, I'm just reeling mm -hmm. off a few uh larry our bass player was a, a rush fan i mean so that type of music you know and i try to explain to people you know it's funny people are calling us um more of an 80s band it, it, and that's great. I have no problem with that. But it, I don't know if we're really an 80s band. What you do is, and and you guys know, when you're in a band and you have this bowl of people, let's say, you know, five people, we're a four-piece, but five, four or five-piece, everybody brings their influences into the band. And when you like a genre of music, again, like Van Halen with me, you know, I'm always trying to bring in some double bass or some, you know, some power power snare or you know the, you know or the hitting the rod on the bell you know a little bit more of what alex does you try to emulate your 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 musical heroes and so that creeps into your writing and that's what it has for us i mean i i i feel like yeah we have that 80s vibe but we, i also feel like we have today's sound and i think that's what makes it so great for people who like rock and roll it's it's so much there and and Jim, to you, you know, what you were saying is, you know, if you listen to the album, we start out with this really funky keyboard and this really cool song called No Peace, No Love. And it's almost 70s Zeppelin, not uh, kind of Zeppelin-ish, but heavy. And then at the very end of the album, once you go through this whole rock ride, at the very end of the album, it, there's an acoustic song to end the album. So there's a ride for everybody on the album. Well, I like that you're kind of have different. It does, yeah. And and I, I like that, that you're kind of coming out with sounds that are reaching across different generations. Do you, do you feel like, uh, you know, you're winning over audiences from all different generations, or do you feel like there's a certain age group that's really kind of your your core demographic right now? So we've been very fortunate, and and I don't, you know, you sound like you're you're egotistical, like ah, oh, you know, wherever we go, but we've been very fortunate that wherever we have played we have won over people who like it at any age. Um, it also helps who you play with. You know what I mean? Like, I, I think if yep. we were playing with, say, Beyonce, we would go over really flat. <laughs> but when you play with, like, the Teslas and, you know, they have their core crowd who are already rock and roll fans, that's a big help. And so that's another thing. You know, we're, we're, we're pretty, we're pretty um, methodical in the things that we do. There, there have been some tours we didn't get. There have been some tours that we were offered that we've turned down. Um, and I won't say who, and I won't go into it because I, I personally didn't feel the mix was good. And that can, you know, every time, you, you know, when you win over a person who likes your band, that's five steps up, right? But if you do something bad, you lose 10 people in one swoop. So we're very methodical about how we how we pair and who we pair with. And, and, then, and then also when we do play with some of these bands, we're very methodical on the on the songs that we play. So that helps. We feel that helps us in capturing uh, people to like the band when we're opening for these other acts that they're seeing. So, yeah, we've been, we've been very fortunate. Um, listen, not everybody's going to like you. Um, there's going to be some people who ridicule you, but that's OK, too. You know, you got to take the good. You got to take the bad with the good. And, and, and the people who don't like us, um, I, I laugh because you listen to us. So that, that's the beauty of it. 
<laughs> they'll come around eventually. And are, are you trying to say that, oh, actually, what, um, what did you think about Earth, Wind, and, I mean, not uh, Cool in the Gang opening for Van Halen on the Different Kind of Truth Tour? I thought it was cool. Um, you, you know, again, I, I think that's pretty cool. I, um, different, you know, but then again, um, I don't know if a lot of people know this or a lot of people do, but back in 1982 on the Diver Down Tour, they had the Kings, of, I think it was like a Kings of Swing type band that opened. It was a horn section band. I don't remember. I don't know if I, like a Tower of Power, that type of band that opened for them in 82 in Hampton. Wow. Yeah, because uh, cause Autograph opened in 84. So, yeah, so I think Van Halen, you know, that didn't surprise me. I like. I, I mean, I liked it. I was fortunate to see that in uh, in that their L.A. stop. And actually, the second time I saw Cool in the Gang. Yeah, that that was, cool uh, the Gang was really good. Um, but but you know, but those are bands that have names. Now, I think if they had somebody that didn't have a name that was trying to pull off a Cool in the Gang, I thought then that would have fallen. I, I believe that would have fallen flat. Well, I, I, was, I, I was definitely uh, one of the people who got there early for that one. And, and I, I saw some people leaving after Cool in the Gang. I'm like, oh, well, you got to stick around. Diamond Dave yeah. do do a little. Don't understand that. Yeah, I don't yeah. understand that move. I, I, like I said, their loss, and, and you know, they'll come around eventually, is what I like to think. Right, right. Now, listen, not, not everything is for everybody. And that, that's where I think some people get lost is because um, – Hey, you know what? I mean, just because we like it, we think it's great. Obviously, we love we we back our music. It's not for everybody, and I understand that. And there's always going to be, you know, in today's world, there's always there's a keyboard. You know, they always say the keyboard warrior who can just type in anonymously that hey, you guys suck. You know, you you know. Yeah, I'm not okay, get okay, tough I'm guy not in your grandma's that. basement. Yeah. yeah, it's your opinion. You know, yeah. you know like. I'm never going to change it. And if I argue with you, I'm only going to deepen your opinion. So, Right. Well, in terms of win winning over fan, like for someone who has never heard Red Rain before, and I've got my list of what I would put out there. But I'm curious to see, like, if you had to introduce a, a new fan to win somebody over to be a Red Rain fan, what three songs would you want them to listen to? Out of our total catalog, or off the oh, it's okay. Yeah, I, I went with the EP as well as well as, as uh, don't look back. Okay, so um, I, so I think um, this is an easy one. Uh, don't look back, the title title song. Um, Here I am, mm -hmm. and not that way off the EP. That almost made my list, but that we match up on Here I Am. Okay, chains on the EP. <laughs> I, I, lo I love that bass intro. I'm a former bass player. And, I, okay. and, then, and then the groove that came later. And speaking of groove, I really, really dig Changes. Really? Really? It's, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a power rock. And it's something like you said, you, and it's not a heavy metal move, but it's, it, it was gro groovy in a way that I, mean, I think not, not enough people picked up on with Metallica's Load album. I know that that album gets get shit on a lot, but I'm like, right. That right. One, it had groove. And I, and I really dig what you guys did on changes. Interesting. Um, Ch change is a great song. I, I do love change. Um, and I love playing it because it's, I, I, I throw a lot of um, mixed double bass into that song. So I really love that song, but not that way. So, you know, somebody asked me the other day, what are, what's, what are my three, funnest songs to play like the funnest songs for me to play and i just um so that would go that would change a little bit but not much but it would see not that way is so much fun that's always a closer for us so there are a lot of people who like that song and it's just it's just fun to play um and don't look back has creeped up there again but the title track red rain red the title track red rain is one is probably my favorite song um of all time because i it's just it, to me it's um it's zero to sixty fast, you know, right into it, and it just it's just heavy. Um, so, chains, you know, it's funny because people mention chains, and also people mention toxic off the EP. That's a good heavy so, one, definitely. Um, yeah. I don't know. I, I <laughs> you know, you know, when you when you say that now, now I'm now I'm second guessing myself, but. Uh, 
But I, I think I'll stick with my list because I, I think there's a little bit for everybody. I think Not That Way is a little more radio friendly or type song. It's rock, but it's not, you know, it's, it's, it's just rock and roll. Um, Don't Look Back's a little heavier. Got that Doc and, you know, George Lynch, obviously. And then, and then Here I Am sort of gives you the diversity of the band. So, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, that's where I would go. Well, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing you guys live. And, uh, what, uh, you know, what, actually, what, once the Nazareth, uh, the, the, the uh, dates with them, is there anything on tap to look forward to later in the year? So, uh, as of right now, we're on, uh, let's see, two, f- we're on five shows right at the moment. I think they only have nine or 10 shows in the United States at this point. So we start in Derry, Connecticut. Uh, and then we play in uh, Wilmington, uh, Delaware, then Warren, Ohio, and then we're in uh, Nashville, Indiana, and then we finish in St. Charles, Illinois. So that's as far as we're going. Mm-hmm. Then I think Nazareth is moving, actually, in y'all's area, they're coming west. We are not. We, we're stopping it. Um, Ill- we're stopping in Illinois. That's where we stop. A lot of people don't like to go west of the Mississippi sometimes. I understand it, especially in the summertime. I get it. Well, it's not so much that. Um, it's more the reason why we didn't, we weren't able to go west is obviously this is not a full-time thing for Red Rain right now. There's, As you all know, uh, the music business is not like it used to be the 80s when it comes to paying out bands. And so we do work. Um, and so it, that's a, it's a time thing and it's a travel thing. So, mm-hmm. you know, we're, we're funding our own tour. So it becomes, you know, yeah. what, what, ca- what you can do and what you can't do. Sure. Well, folks, definitely check out redrainband.com. Red Rain also on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all the, all the socials. And uh, Sammy Lee, thank you so much for joining us tonight on All Over the Place. Absolutely I appreciate pleasure. you having me. Yeah, Thanks appreciate you stopping by, and uh, hope you get a chance to tour over here on our on our coast. Uh, we would definitely love to see you live sometime. I appreciate it. I, I would like to say this though, because it's funny. I, I do get some email from people like, "Hey, when are you coming to Kansas City?" And we, it, it, one thing I, I try to get people to understand: it's not that we don't want to play your city. First of all, as you guys know, you're in the you know you're in the business. There's a protocol to actually play. You got to get a promoter who wants you to play, and you got to go through. The, so uh, we would love to play everywhere, but um, we're working on it. Listen, we, we, we were in Fort Wayne, Indiana is the farthest we've been. Now we're, now we're pushing our way a little bit more west, so we'll, we'll get there eventually. So it, a bit. Well, actually, and very quickly, uh, you mentioned it earlier, uh, what a lot of bands did uh, during COVID. Would there be any chance of uh, doing a, a virtual streaming show from you guys to hit the from coast to coast and global? So we actually have a virtual show in in a, in, in, in a proverbial can that we, we were going to release. We never released it. Um, at the time, I wanted it out. When I go back and look at it, I'm like, ah, we probably could have been a little better than we were. So I don't know if we're ever going to release that or not. I don't know yet. Well, rock and roll or power rock, I mean, sometimes it needs to be a little sloppy. Yeah, well – it's not even so much as it's, it's not sloppy per se. I think visually it could have been a little, I mean, visually it was good. It was good. I just, I don't know. Again, I'm always thinking, could it have been a little bit better? So I don't know. We may release it. I don't know yet. I think, but I think again, the the key for us is to really get in front of people again. Yeah. So our last show, um, our last show was last year, almost a year ago. And then before that, it was a year ago. So, in two years, we played two two shows, and I think we really need to get ourselves back on stage and get the name back out again. And then, and then maybe that might be something we might be thinking about, like say around the holidays when bands sort of slow down. That might not be a bad idea. Well, whenever whenever we get to see you live out here, I'm looking forward to it, Sammy Lee appreciate from Red it. Rain. Thanks again for stopping by. I appreciate it. It's nice meeting y'all, and thank y'all for your time and thanks for the support. Absolutely. Thank you. And then there's five shows, kill them all, rock them to death. Thank you. We will. And, and there'll be some probably video on the internet. So uh, we have a lot of videos up there now. So go take a look if you don't know who, uh, who we are and what we do. So thank you again. And um, I hope to see you guys at a show soon. Indeed. Right on. All right. All right. Oh. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>
Christine. It's not an end of a show until she says bye bye. <laughs>